All right, we'll call the meeting to order. 6.31. And anything that needs to be a, um, amended for the agenda, or are we good to approve as written? We're good to approve. I don't think we're gonna need an executive session once I do the town manager's report, but we'll leave it on there just in case. Okay. Move to approve the agenda as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We have uh, no appointments this evening, so we'll move right to public comment. So if there's anything under public comment that anybody would like to express, this would be the time that's not on the agenda. I'll look to in person first, and then we'll go to the- I want to comment on your second item. She has no public comments. Not then. Okay, just wait for the second item. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me see what's in the chat, hang on. Okay. All right. Nothing in the chat. Okay. There's Denise. All right. So here in no public comment, then we will move forward. <clears throat> uh, first on the agenda is a uh, request of appointment to the DRB board. So as you saw in Dana's letter, he's interested in the PC too, but we didn't have a quorum. So we didn't vote last time and, and the PC has to vote first and then make their recommendation to the select board. So tonight it'll be the DRB. And then after the PC meets in February, we'll most likely ask you to appoint him to the PC. Is Rick, Rick aware of Dana's interest? Oh yeah, in the he's, DRB? yes, yeah. he's very excited. Okay. Good. He wanted him for the DRB and was, and if he didn't, if he had to choose between two, Rick wanted him on the DRB, <laughs> but Dana said he'd do both. So, okay. which is nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So any further discussion on Dana or just need a school board member many, many years ago? I don't know. He's worked for the state and yeah. um, for years, his letter said, and um, it's a scratch golf. he said, <laughs> Yeah, he has professional experience in zoning and planning, land use development, administrative procedures. Um, very smart man. Nice. So I don't know about school board, but probably so. He, they raised many, their children many, many here. Years ago. Yeah, he says our two children attended Bethel schools. Yeah. So, yeah. Move to appoint uh, Dana Kolovescu to the DRB. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And we have a letter of resignation um, from the Recreation Committee. Dietra. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, I'd like to make a comment. Sure. Um, in the summer of 2015, the pool situation with staff and programs, um, we had a lot of parents coming to the committee and um, parents went to the town administration and the committee went to the town administration because things were not going right at the pool for the summer concerning programs and certain staff members. Um, the administration didn't do, uh, just sort of ignored our concerns. So in September, we were delighted, the committee was delighted when Corey Stearns introduced us to Deidre Feeney with her background of waterfront. And um, she had been a waterfront director at the camp in New York. We were delighted to um, meet her and um, she joined our committee and she started helping us with um, um, things that we could um, present in different policies for the um, uh, center in the pool, um, job descriptions, because there were either none or a lousy one for the pool director. Um, and uh, so we worked with her and she helped us so much with changes um, concerning the pool. And then um, when, um, and programs at the center and, um, um, in uh, the fall of uh, 2000 and uh, I forget, um, 
2000, I think in 16, I forget what year. Yeah, the fall of 2017, when Greg Maggard and Katie, the bookkeeper, um, came to us and said, we think um, instead of having college students, we should have an adult. And the committee was excited because in 2011, 12, we had a math teacher that was the pool director and he did a fabulous job. So, so we thought that Greg's idea and Katie's idea was terrific. And so we turned to Deidre and said, would you be interested in applying for pool director? And she said, yeah, I think I would um, um, be interested to apply. And we were so excited. And since then, she has been such an asset. We can't, we are, um, we are so grateful with all her implements of programs and Friday fun nights and helping establish um, um, good swimming lesson things and new lifeguards and getting training for lifeguards that weren't done in the past. And, um, and uh, um, helping set, we're involved with the ice skating rink. Now we have an ice skating rink in the winter and fundraising and saving our swings and moving a wonderful area for playground and, and all the fundraising for the skateboard park and um, all her good ideas and all her energy and um, um, things that she's, she has contributed so we wish her well, and we are so grateful that she has been such an asset to our committee, and we wish her well. Thank you. I didn't know all that. That's really interesting. Oh, I didn't know some of that stuff. I didn't. I didn't know you had a math teacher that did it before the season. Yeah, so we did, really and then <clears throat> then we went back to um, just have college students because yeah. it was always college students. Then we had this wonderful math teacher that did for a couple of years. And then he moved back to the Midwest and then we went back to college students. And yeah, I knew, I I remember when she had to write the bloodborne pathogens balls. <laughs> I thought, yeah. Mister, you know, you got a good one if someone's willing to do like go through all the yeah. things and do all yeah. that stuff. So. Yeah, we did, <clears throat> there was so much that needed to be done that, yeah. um, that weren't being done. And it just, and She's it went on, on death news. Now, is she? Yeah, oh, nice. she has a whole man oh, that she's working on to make sure yeah. the next person is like really yeah. trained and has all this stuff together. Yeah. And oh, yeah, good. so she's, you know, been working on that too. Oh, so, that's good. Yeah, which will be nice. Because we were uh, concerned that it went on deaf ears for a, a lot of years. So. Yeah. No, so, she's, she's, yeah, she's been such an Oh, ass. that's so nice, what, Ellie. What is the mm -hmm. process for, because I know we're going to probably need a new director i know she's going to go through this year but is that a rec like is the rec committee take that on or is that a town we just it's know a town. it's, a, it's town a town thing, thing. yeah yeah but, but you know but, it, it, ellie will know ellie knows yeah. everybody so she may know right. someone who is yeah. applying and but they um you it's know we'll do town. a higher committee just like we did before so yeah detri yeah. hoping to start with someone and then kind of phase out over the summer and let this they don't like she said they don't want me breathing down their neck all summer they you know, so yeah. she's hoping that, um, yeah, yeah. Cause, um, for a long time we interviewed for lifeguards and stuff, but we, mm -hmm. we said in, in 2016 that, that we, we changed, um, a lot of, um, things that we were doing. We just didn't feel that it was our, our thing to do. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's rightfully a town. Process. When, when's your next meeting, Ellie? February 1st. And where is that located at? At the town office. February 1st and March 1st, two meetings to get ready for town meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now we have it at the town office. And what time is your meeting at? Seven, because Shane works late and, and he can't get there until seven. I was trying to talk my daughter into joining the work committee. Oh, very nice. Well, she's having it from the school side. And yeah. Get it on for college applicants and things yeah. like that. Yeah, we, we have, game on the curves, we have uh, advertised for um, students to be on in the past. And I think Gabriel did a little bit at one time, but, uh, but yeah. we, we want people to, the diversity, yeah.
So I just need a motion to accept teacher's um, letter of resignation. I move with deep appreciation and gratitude for all of the work she has done for the energy committee. The rec, the rec, for the rec committee. I mean, you've had a year of service, right? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. <clears throat> Okay. And uh, we have the second class liquor license approval. Yeah, it's interesting now. It's all online. Um, they have a, of course, like everything, they have a portal. So there's nothing for you to sign anymore. Um, and the only reason the tobacco license is in here is because Pam wanted it all together. So um, <clears throat> you can see that it's slow and low groceries is the name of the business, but it's, um, you know, but it is. Um, Bethel Central Market. So, so we just yeah. approve it, but no so, signatures? Right. So you make a motion to approve, and then she has to go into this portal, and she enters the date of your meeting and everything and when you approved it. So. Hmm. Okay. Just need a motion to approve um, second class liquor license for slow and, uh, slow and low groceries. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Is also an application for tobacco? No, it's um that okay. used to go in front of select yeah. boards, but it no longer does. Right. Um <clears throat> Pam just wanted it all together, so she just gave me both copies because she wanted to stay together. And then we have the certificate of highway mileage for the year. Yep, ending it, that's right. <clears throat> no changes. Nope, no changes next year. I guess I was just looking at with some of the, with some of the um, third class roads that are um, not up to standards, is that? No, they'll deal with it. They They already took one off that wasn't up to standards. Okay. So, um, so once we make is... yeah once we make those if we move forward to the discontinuances this year then this next year will be adjusted but for now it's not and this does require signatures <clears throat> is that class 356 supposed to be 5622 yes i just fixed it i just noticed it so thank you i just corrected it on the original So that will just require motion and signatures. So move. Okay, all in favor? All right. Here you go, right here. What is a class one lane, you know? With this I don't know, oh, the one, I don't know, because there's nothing on there. We don't have one, so I don't know. Here you go. <laughs> I don't have to know, because we don't have to know. We don't, I don't have, have one. to know, because we don't have one. <laughs> Um, be a one so there you go. That's right. I don't know. Yeah, but one in this town, group. you never know. We might yeah, have one. It's just not going. I just don't. Know about I've never probably heard do today. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> what lane <laughs> class one lane means? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll have to ask somebody. I don't know. What? Well, have to ask. I don't know. Oh, I'll Google it tonight. Go. Tell me. Here you go. Google tells you everything. <laughs> True. Last one. I'm sure it's been on there every year. I just never. Yeah. No. I, I, I mean, it must be a <clears throat> a lower end because it's in there with class four and legal trail. Yeah. I don't know. Now you're making me wonder. Class one lane. It's a very well paved single lane highway. That's right. Or or is it not paved? Because it's like down there with like all like the lower end, yeah. you know. Sorry. Is it a downtown that's dirt? <laughs> like, I don't know. Oh, here we go. It says right here, class one town highway lane miles are sections of class one that may be divided or multi-lane sections. I just don't let me click on it. Here we go. Interesting. Weird, huh? There's that section. Huh. Okay, here it says frequently asked questions. By God, you're not alone. It's right here. <laughs> are sections of class one that may be divided or multi lane section. These miles are in addition to the class one miles and in some years get supplemental funding. 
but are not used in the standard appropriation calculation for state aid for maintenance funding. Class lane one, class one lane miles need to meet specific criteria to be included, um, i.e., also this is just talking about a lane width of at least 10 feet, um, calculation of length shall not include any tapers and will commence when the width of the lane has reached a full 10 feet. A lane will be only considered if it is identified by appropriate lane striping. Turning and holding lanes shall not be included unless the length of such lane exceeds 200 feet. This sounds like maybe this would affect Burlington, Montpelier. So it sounds like more like a one-way, yeah. one, <clears throat> right, one lane yeah. road, right? Yeah, so it's It'd be like the entrance to primary and secondary direction. So yeah, that yeah. could be entrance to a Yeah. So there you yeah, go. Get some lanes. We need more money. Straight from <laughs> well, Vtran. It's, 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 it's not a how much funding do you get out of it? Yeah, it's not a <laughs> that's right. So that's yeah. that's the answer. I'm sorry. So yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. I learned something. That's right. Everybody learned something. <laughs> See, this is educational, Denise, not just all fun. <laughs> uh, all right, we've got everybody's signatures. Whoops, one, two, three. Except for Dave's. Yep, that's fine. And uh, it. I, just continuing on with the final of the budget discussions. So I gave you the version that is going to go in town report. So it doesn't have to be legal size. And, uh, you know, I don't have to make multiple copies. So this is the one that will go in town report. So... Just remember, this does not include um, the additional money for the library, the additional money for the phase two of the skate park, or the additional $1,000 mm -hmm. for the playhouse. So those would be, that's not in a budget you're presenting, that would be additional to this. That's why, um, so when it says that, you know, the amount to be raised by taxes, those are not included. Oh, I informational meetings. Yes, absolutely. We are going to have them on the both February meetings. Yep, they are going to be. Whoops, you don't want that. Hang on, I gotta look at my calendar, Ellie, because I just put them in. They're going to be February thirteenth, thirteenth, twentieth, and twenty seventh. We usually have a special meeting, which would be the February twentieth. Will be a special meeting. Um, we always do a separate one just for informational. Yeah. We will. Yep. We will. We do it. Um, yeah. Um, actually, I don't. We don't have. I think we did it last year on the thirteenth as well. Just as a small portion, we just went over the warning. The twentieth, we'll do a totally special meeting. That will be the only thing on the agenda is yeah. that and the bond informational. We always do a special meeting before okay. a town meeting, and then the twenty seventh, we'll we have to legally do the twenty seventh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, so, but we've always kind of, that way it gives people more opportunity. That way we have had, you know, two regular select board meetings to discuss it, plus a special meeting. Mm -hmm. Just try to get a, do our part to get the word out. Yeah. So the, again, um, the breakdown on that is the base, the base budget that doesn't include the extra money for the library, the extra money for the, Rec department skate park and the playhouse that's a 2.3 cent increase um, over last year and then the add-ons if you add all the add-ons that could be as much as 2.8 cents an extra so if if it got voted in the base budget with all the add-ons that would be 5.1 cents is how the how the math comes out okay. currently on that and it, you could see it looks, and the other thing too, that looks a little funny when you see the tax rate sheet that we do, um, it, uh, when we're looking at this, you can see that when you look at the amount to be raised by taxes, it says 9.69%, but because we've had growth in the grand list, that helps us out. So we actually aren't going to be, taxes are not going to go up 9.69% because we have had, you know, because we had the growth in the grand list. So it's actually going to offset it just like it did last year. I hope your power's on, Ellie, when you get home. <laughs> you can stay and be warm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we do have, so just so we know, that's, if someone sees this, oh my God, taxes are not going to go up 9.69% because of the growth in the grand list. Right. So just want to make 
everybody. Yeah, the growth in the grand list ate about half of it. Yeah, yeah. Half of the potential increase, so. But if you, it's it's hard, but like from some of the information I've gotten from other areas of the state right now with budgets, like you see a lot of them that are over 10, mm -hmm. like over 10%, you know, which means, you know, I don't know what that is for their yeah, pennies on the dollar, but right. you know, yeah. so many of them you hear over 10% right now. Um, and again, just looking at ours, I mean, if ours had a growth of nine, a little over nine percent. You know, when I was looking at it, like, you know, right out of the gate, three, three percent of that was just um, inflated cost over last year. So, fuel, or salt, or those, those materials that have gone up, um, just right out of the gate, three, three percent of that was just eaten on inflation pieces. Um, you know, we have some money that's in this one to take care of the um, matching funds for our four grant projects that we have. Um, and it's probably, uh, Teresa and I were talking about this, you know, with everything, with the interest rates going up and some of the commodities going up, it's, you know, this might be on the tail end of doing work for, you know, best bang for your buck right now. You might have to sit on some projects for a while until you know, costs of things come down, um, or or you might be stuck, yeah, <laughs> paying exorbitant prices. You know, and you know we're seeing that like on the water line too. We'll talk about too is you know, before last time we were talking about a zero percent interest rate that you're at two percent now already, yeah, right? Because they and, raised the yeah median household income and it took a so and a, and a lot great, of but. and a lot of the work <laughs> we have to do on that water line is we got to do it regardless to get our to keep our permit at some point right so yes. if we don't do it now when do we do it and how much more will that cost us yeah so right. we're already seeing how everything's coming up and yeah and we can't add users to the system right now either and they're not willing to take right. dana's like i'm basically sure. not willing to take that off till we you know so so i i think overall like analyzing the budget and looking at what other people are doing i feel very happy about our budget but the only thing i would just caution is that we have to you know, if our budget continues to grow at this rate, which, you know, maybe this year is just an anomaly, but hopefully, but our growth in the grand list will not continue to grow. So, you know, we would have to make some tough choices here mm -hmm. um, next year, the year after, if the costs continue to grow, but the grand list doesn't. So, yeah, <clears throat> I agree. But, but for this year, it, it worked out well. Um, and we may be okay for the next couple of years, you know, doing the reappraisal and, you know, so we'll have to see, but yeah, you're right. So, it's always tough. Right. So the budget has gone up 10 and a quarter. I'm looking at page two of two on the mm -hmm. summary. Mm -hmm. Yep. Income revenue has gone up 13. Yep, because of that. Because of transfer whatever, station. whatever the reason. 50,000 from the transfer station. All right. And so the amount to be raised by taxes is 969. Yep. I mean, and that will be impacted by the grand list. Yes. Right. So right. that will cut it almost in half. Mm -hmm. And then. You know, so we're at just under a 5% increase on our end of things. Okay. <clears throat> so what do you need? Just a motion to approve the budget. So this is what we're going to go to the voters with. Because this is what's in the warning. So. Right. Any, any further discussion with the budget? Dave, you're on... I don't know. Good. Oh, You're good. Okay. All right. So I guess just need approve the budget. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. And then we have the town meeting warning and the discussion of the most recent. 
So I put those in backwards. I guess you need to talk about H42 first because um, obviously everybody knows it gives you the right to move, um, you know, back to Australian ballot and, and not do it in person. Right. But you also know if you do that, you can't vote on member one has the um, mailing of a town report and one doesn't. Yeah. If we go to so Australian if you go to Australian ballot, you can't vote on. But if we move it, yeah, we could. No, if you to meet in person, we can vote on. We will vote in person on whether or not next year we will elect officers by Australian ballot. Right. But if we, we move we held to Australia, in, <laughs> if we had a, an in person meeting, but we changed the date moved the date yep you could still we yeah. could still do that yeah yep sorry yep so i mean because this authorizes either or right it's true it right. does um you know i mean i think people the whole state law about you know i think people know when town meeting is state law allows people to get time off work to attend um obviously the other thing that impacts us is we don't really want to move town meeting because we need to do the bond vote in order to um well i mean and we still could do the bond vote because it's australian ballot but um but it would be weird i wouldn't even we'd have to figure out how to do the warning because we would still want to move forward with the bond vote in march so it would end up having to be probably like a whole different bond warning, like our one in November was. Remember when we voted in November of 2018? Maybe to, to do the bond vote. So we would have to warn, you know, whole bond. So it would just obviously it, it would change some things if you were going to do that. I wonder what the special <laughs> alter alternative procedures that they gave the town of Brattleboro and North. Oh, Eastern I know. Place. I don't know. What were those? What were those caveats? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. But um, he hasn't signed this yet. It's on his desk. But oh, I thought it was signed. No, I wasn't they, sure. They're but... expecting he's going to get signed this week. But... Well, and for us, we our town report goes to the printers tomorrow. Yeah. So, and because of all the statutes, this is basically when you need to sign. Yeah. So I, I actually, from our last conversation, last meeting, I spent some time kind of sitting with this and with the different you know, points that were being made. And I, I feel like as, as tempting as it is to want to sort of push it off, I actually think kind of your point of like, people know when this meeting date is, we have a lot of, we have a lot of things in motion and we're also, we're, we're setting this up in a space that is large enough that people can really social distance. They can keep themselves safe if they're concerned. And I think the unfortunate reality is that there will be some people who maybe choose not to come if we hold it in person um, for their safety, but the but the fact is there are ways to stay safe and do this. And we're sort of in this mode of shifting where, you know, life has to kind of get back into gear and we have to do the, the right things for ourselves and our peers to keep each other safe, to keep ourselves safe. And this is a kind of a good example of that, of there are a lot of things that we can do as individually individuals to keep ourselves safe and to keep others safe. And that, you know, maybe it's that the town says, we're going to hold this in person and we really recommend that people consider the safety factors and the health risks and we'll have masks on hand and if we, we want will. them. Yeah. We yeah. have masks, yeah. we have hand sanitizer. Pam got a bunch of PPE from the Secretary of State's office. So we will definitely have that available, you know, for people when they come in either on the to vote or, and if they choose not to come to town meeting, they still can vote for their school board officers as well. Do you vote your school budget via Australian ballot? What's that? Do you vote your school? No, just the officers. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the officers and you can still vote for um, the bond vote and you can still vote for whether or not you want to go us. No. <laughs> What's the other one? Oh, cannabis. Sorry. I had my two people. Up. So, um, but yes, I, we are going to have those things. And Jean has started, you know, looking for pies and donate. Pie. Yeah. Jean, gosh, bless Jean. Yeah. If you're, if you're worried and eat your pie. Outside. Yeah. Jean yeah. Burnham is going to, you know, is putting the oh word God. out to spearhead, you know, that and, we are going to put out an email um, tomorrow uh, to all the committees asking them to be present or to have a, you know, even it doesn't have to be anything fans, just be there, tell them what you're up to, answer questions, maybe people volunteer. And um, so I think there's a lot of people who really want to meet to just feel that normalcy and have that connection. 
And there's some major issues that we've been pushing off for a few years that yeah. it, I think it would be almost at this point detrimental to push them off for yet another year. Just... Not disagreeing. Like, yeah, no, I, I know. It, it was something I wanted to discuss. Brought it up and I really sat with it for the last couple of weeks because last meeting, I don't think I had a strong opinion one way or another. And I sort of had to think about that. Like, oh, well, what, what are you thinking about this? So I, I think one thing that I would ask is that we designate at least some area that it is social distanced so that if there are people who don't want to that that's a place they need to stay out of and out of respect for people who do want to be distanced well i mean because the bleachers are all anyone could socially distance in the bleachers and because uh, but i don't want a non-vaxxer non-vaccine person uh -huh. to say well i know you're all socially distanced but i'm gonna come and sit in the middle oh i i, I don't know i mean i'm not sure how no can no we idea know. who's a vaxxer and who's not a but remember that's been proven at this point that vaccination or no vaccination you still can spread you can still get I, it spread. well it doesn't matter what, if you're vaccinated or not my point is <laughs> but but i hear we you live you in a be... crazy world sure where there are people who may choose to, you know, be in your face about it. And I'd... I mean, maybe that it's as easy as like, like Teresa was saying, like the, the bleachers kind of allow for a little bit more distancing and people tend to congregate um, on the side, you know, closer to the pies that tends to be a bit more full and the side on the, on the other side tends to be a bit emptier. And so maybe we just designate that as, you know, this side is for social distancing. Um, or high-risk individuals. I can ask Pam about it. I mean, yeah. she, um, just remember those social distancing guidelines went from six feet down to three feet. So three feet's okay. really, you know, mm -hmm. not you know, one people, arm length at this point. I don't think people even think about that anymore. They just think yeah. about they're going into a place where there are a lot of people and they're not comfortable, so they're going to mask up. Sure. Yep. And they're going to but, but I think, sit you know, you know, a little bit further away. Us being able to provide um, masks and, yeah. and any type yeah. of PPE yeah, hand type. Hand and sanitizer. And, stuff and you certainly could, That's as good you as you can certainly do. could rope off a piece and just say, you know, if you want to. I mean, I don't know. The section kind of sets people into a category. That, yeah, that you know, might make people just, feel no. excluded or called out. Yeah, but we definitely will have hand sanitizer. We will have masks. We will have... I mean, you know, there's plenty of room. We all know people. You could certainly stand in the back or off to, you know, there's there's plenty of of room. I've never felt really crowded there. Um, can also ask um, when they set up maybe to put a little bit more room in between seats if people, you know, John Hubble always sets up. So can but we'll and I think for the most part, normally mm -hmm. there's more chairs and there are people that sit in them anyways. Um, from all the meetings that I've ever been to, you know, you might get quite a bit of people that sit in the first like half a dozen rows, but then the back rows are usually pretty empty or, you know, so I think there's opportunities that you could place a couple less chairs and space them out and still have the opportunity for the same amount of people to sit down. Yeah. So, so the other thing is this, so as far as the warning goes, there's two, two warnings you could see. So one asks, Number 18 asks, shall the town provide notice of the availability of the annual report by postcard mailed to all registered voters at least 30 days before the annual meeting instead of ma mailing the report to the voters of the town? So <clears throat> this was a question that was brought up actually Penny at Spalding Press because they, they print it, but they also mail it for us and with postage has increased and so she asked the question have you ever considered which a lot of towns do this and you could say you know they'll be available for pickup at the library at the town <laughs> office and if people call you can mail them to them if they want so she, it was something that she asked so the postage isn't a big difference for sure there is some savings there but i think what you will find as i have found in other towns once you when you stop mailing them like that more people read it online um, and you end up printing less town reports. So I think the real cost savings comes from the less amount of town reports that you would actually print. I mean, I, I still say if we printed the delinquent tax list 
utility lifts, marriage, deaths, births, marriage, deaths, deaths and births. Page. You know, there'd be like, we could do this on four pages and that's what would go because having run a landfill before, you would be saddened by how many end up in the landfill very quickly or the transfer you know station very quickly so uh, penny had asked i told her that it would this um you know this was it we had tonight is so why that's why i made two different meeting or two different ones um someone says i have a comment oh dave is <laughs> dave it says school <laughs> instead of dave i i dave, don't know i don't know why it does that it changed on its own i didn't do it but that's anyway. okay uh, I don't know about anybody else in town, Bethel, but <clears throat> getting mail <clears throat> is not a regular thing anymore. So <laughs> we, we're required to provide uh, reports within a certain amount of days of the meeting. And if we don't get them out a lot sooner than we have, there are people who are not going to have them 10 days before the meeting. Because I'm getting mail, I get mail once a week some weeks, twice a week, some weeks. Um, and if I if the delivery misses that once a week until the next week, I might not get the report until the day after the meeting. It's true. And unfortunately for us, I mean, we will have mailed them in plenty of time. Whether they get delivered or not is beyond our scope. But you're yeah, right. So we, we, just our, yeah, we, are, we just got our yeah, we just got our mail today after now. three days. <laughs> Okay, well, I just want to make sure that I know we are obligated to have it to in people's hands <clears throat> in a certain amount of time. And if, yeah. it may be the post office's issue, but are, are we still held to the obligation? Well, the good news is we don't mail. These won't get mailed out of Bethel. These get mailed out of Barrie because a couple of years ago, um, Bethel does not want us to mail but it is about distribution. And I know she's so short staffed. I mean, the postmistress herself is delivering mail. So I'm not sure. I mean, as long as we can prove, which we will, because it goes to the printers tomorrow. So we will have them in the mail. <clears throat> yeah. So we have all the proof that we mailed it. Okay. Um, it also will be on our website so people could access it there. And we'll make sure we put that on Facebook and Front Porch Forum. Um, so we will have hold up our, our legal obligation, but you're right. I know that it has been a struggle. We just got our mail today after three days. So um, I think, you know, obviously they're doing the best they can. So, so this, anyway, so what this would do is this would relieve us of mailing the actual town reports. We would still be mailing a postcard to all resident uh this is registered voters and i think we also and we also do the we merge it so we do registered voters and property owners you know that are in bethel because you could be a property owner in bethel and not a registered voter so we do try to cover and get as many people as we can so this would just give you a postcard saying it's online this is where you can access or you could pick it up at the town office or you could pick it up at the library or wherever else you want and, to distribute it from this would be a vote <clears throat> yeah you'd have to so if you it choose to be a vote of the town. it does and australian no um oh, nope well, from the floor vote it's number 18 and i think putting it on the one it doesn't hurt put it yeah. to the voters to yeah. to vote about it yeah i just wasn't nope. sure like i said penny brought it up to us and i'm like it's a good thing, you know, and it's now or not till next year. So I just didn't know how people felt. I, it's, it's not so much <clears throat> posted. A couple hundred bucks is not, not a big deal. But like you say, it's it's down the line. You may not have to print as many. And as Dave mentions, right now, things are really difficult at the post office and probably going to be the same. We're probably going to continue to see that mm -hmm. over the years until they get staffed back up to where they need to be yeah my guess is we'd go from printing like 705 which is what we're printing this year to probably 500 because the people that don't read it that don't want it that don't aren't going to look at it, and we obviously will bring some with us to town meeting but uh, again it wasn't my choice uh or frankly um but she had asked and so i said well we'll do two warnings and they can pick the one they want to sign <laughs> I 
No, I mean, I, I think the, I, I don't really have a preference either way on. I think the, the thing I'm a little worried about, of course, is, you know, we go from no town meeting the last three years, couple of years, and then we get a really full warning of <clears throat> things that we, you know, more items than we're normally used to by far. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do we somehow overwhelm people of, oh my God, we got so yeah. much stuff to do. Yeah. Or is it just, uh, you know, this is what happens when we haven't had it in a couple yeah. of years. We yeah. get all this we stuff that piled up that we got to get off our plate now, yeah. you know? That's kind of makes sense. But I'm right. thinking at this point, it's going to have to be- meeting agenda, I don't think it matters. <laughs> but at this point, it's going to be pie and maybe a lunch or, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're almost getting to dinner here at this point, so. Well, some of it I think will go quickly. I mean, the election of officers always seems to go quickly and- that's a big portion of it here. And then, um, you know, for sure, really get down to 17, 18. Yeah, the budgets have been good. And yeah, some of this stuff. Well, by the time we get to 18, it may only be half people there. But yeah, this is a, it's a full, full it's warning. Full slate, that's for yeah. sure. And it's also unusual because you do have the discussion. And there may not be much of a discussion because we will have also had three bond and budget informationals. So hopefully, people have attended those. I mean, sometimes it's just us in here, but hopefully people have attended those so they don't have, and we will have mailed a mailer and it will be in town report. So hopefully people, maybe there'll be less questions because people will have read, you know, all the information. Um, Can you put a little wait, blurb in the, uh, Dave has, in the Herald about the special meetings? We could, yeah. The three um, meetings. Hang on a second. Well, Dave's got something in the chat I gotta oh. read. This agenda only has about three more articles. That's what Dave said, yeah. And why is it have to be number 18? Why you, why can't you put it above? Is there any more business con to conduct? Or do we agree to do it in four equal installments? Those are the people, those are the articles that people leave on. Yeah. So instead of being 18, I, why can't it be 16? I think, well, <laughs> I don't know. I was just kind of the way I, I just added it on at the last minute and um, I think people will stick around for number 17, which is shall the town of Bethel elect its town officers by Australian ballot. I think that will be a good hold for people to stay through the majority of the meeting. And if they've gotten that far, I can't imagine they'd run out on number 18. You know what I mean, Dave? Because I think a lot I, of people- I were just are saying, if, if someone's worried that we had number one and we have a lot more articles, there really isn't that many more articles. And I agree, usually the last two are uh, really a, I could tell you what's going to be the vote on it next year, yeah. the year after, and the year after. Mm -hmm. It'll be yes and yes, or yes and no. But yeah. uh, so as far as more articles, I, I'm not concerned. The only thing would, I would say was if, if you were worried, move it up. Yep. I don't think there are any rules or anything about where it's placed within the warning. No. Nope. No, nope, but it's just the way the way it. I mean, I'm going with it the way it is. I'm just okay. offering. Um, nineteen articles. All right. We have another question, Owen. After the budget informational hearings, can the budget be amended before going to town meeting? No, it may only be amended on the floor, Owen. You good with that, Owen? And then it depends on and, and it depends on the okay. size of the amendment. Too. Yeah, and it also depends. Um, so Owen, the, the thing is, if the budget is amended on the floor, obviously it has to be a, a motion in a second. The other thing is when it is if the budget is amended on the floor, um, say for example somebody wants to cut $10,000 out of the budget. They cannot tell the select board where to cut the money. They can make a recommendation, but in the end, it will be the select board's choice if the money, say money had to be cut. If money was to be added, obviously you'd have to get enough, <clears throat> um, you know, at the time. And it couldn't be added a new item couldn't be added to the budget. You have to vote on the budget as it's presented. And let's say you want to add an extra 500 to um, the food shelf or something, you could do that, but you couldn't add, like say all of a sudden you want to give $10,000 to AARP. Does that make sense? <clears throat> 
I got a thumbs yeah. up. And, and and you can't change the question. So right. If if the intent of the question is changed, that becomes a major change, which can't be okay. um, amended from the floor. So like yeah. make it up. If someone got up and said uh, right. the Australian ballot question for officers, and someone got up and said, "Well, I would make an amendment to do everything Australian ballot." Yeah, you can't do that. That, that couldn't take place because right. that changes the question. Right. Yeah, um, he'd ask specifically about the the budget yeah. numbers. But did you have a specific concern or question, Owen? about the budget no no i was just wondering so i can if, if people ask me you know at the bar um i have the right answers <laughs> oh sure no happy to help i just wanted to make sure if you had a specific question that we answered you thank you you're welcome i, I got a uh, a question that i don't think i've ever seen asked but maybe it will be can you uh, amend a, amend a article to the point of can we omit article 17 no nope that'd be a major change you can vote it down no yeah, you can't you, could... like you can't vote you can't vote it it's not piecemeal vote down is it it would have to be um like for let me just look at the let me give an example shall the town of beth elect its town officers by australian ballot you know, you have to vote it up or down you'd either say okay. no or you can't omit it. You you just would have to. The majority would either say yes or no. Thank you. You're welcome. So are we call this the new draft, or <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it. I guess it's one you're going to sign. So <laughs> you could just say motion to approve town meeting warning because this is the one. Um, okay. And to approve the town meeting warning with 19 articles on it. There you go. There you go. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And let me just pass that around so you will have to sign. I'll try to stop by tomorrow, Therese, to sign whatever needs to be done. Sure, thanks. If you don't feel up to it, Dave, if you're not feeling good tomorrow, we have, you'll have four signatures on it, so you'll be okay. But if you, but feel free to come by. So if you're, but if you're not feeling good, don't feel pressure. All righty. If <coughs> all that's being passed, hmm. it would be good if uh, the town report were on the first page of the website. Yeah, once it's done. So I, the I link think... be on right there on the first page. Yeah, I, I so think it's it easy to. Is. And it may be. I'm just. Yeah, I'll have to look. I don't know. I'll I'm look. just making that suggestion. Yeah, I'll make a note because I can't. I think it is, but I'll make a note. Um, link. I think right now it's like fewer people. It was a fewer times people have to click on something feel better. Like it's on there. Usually yeah. we do put it on the main page. I think so. Um, towards well, I want to say towards the bottom, but yeah, it's you usually on the bottom on the right, right where the audits are and but and the new page we haven't like, put yeah. anything on the new page yet. Yeah, I'll have to ask her. I don't know, or I'll have to look at the website. Honestly, I can't remember. Well, oh, I just I just oh, strongly yes. suggest that it, that it should be prominently displayed. <laughs> yeah, it's a, no, definitely. Yeah. And we will put a link on front porch forum and Facebook and all that stuff too. So, um, and when we put something in the newspaper and there was a whole thing. All right. We have the discussion of the um, declaration of intent for the waterline project. Yep, so it's the declaration and adoption of the declaration of intent, the necessity resolution, and there's also a bond issue warning on here that you'll read. It doesn't necessarily mean a motion, but those are the two that you'll, that you'll do. So I put something on each of your tables and I've been working with Mike Maynard. I gave you information in the report here. Um, Hmm. Uh, da, 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 talking to you about um, budget numbers and stuff. So what, what I did find out today from Mike Maynard is that we, <laughs> excuse me, Bethel is not going to qualify for any um, disadvantaged subsidy. The state of Vermont, and it's going to impact not just Bethel, it's going to impact quite a few people. 
Um, <clears throat> the median household income for Bethel increased from 51,471 to 62,188. So <clears throat> that's good news in the sense that Bethel residents are making more money, but what happens is it, it makes a disadvantaged subsidy harder to get. So for us, we are definitely going to get, um, you know, 425,000 in, in lead abatement, but that is the same deal as the 2.8 million. The more we find, the better we do, because it's a hundred percent. It's digging it up, replacing it, putting it back in the whole enchilada. So Tim, when we, he had done um, before his passing, he had gone through the plans and of course had dealt with Aldrich and Elliott doing the $2.8 million project. And he felt that the whole scope of the project that's left <clears throat> Graham Street, um, Highland Ave, and all the streets that we're going to be doing in this project were galvanized. So that, and, and he was correct in that assumption on the 2.8 million. So what we're going to be looking at is 425,000 you know, up to. So of course, we all have to remember that the project is going to come in, we're going to bid it out, could come in less. And it's going to go out to bid, it's going to depend on what we get for, um, you know, what's actually in the ground. And then of course, you have the bond, then you have a year for the warranty period. So as you know, it took us a while to sugar out exactly what we owed after the 2.8 million. But that worked out amazingly well for us. That was about $2.8 million in work for about a buck a month for users. So, I mean, <clears throat> it, we did well. So currently the state is offering also a little, so the lead forgiveness and a percentage, I think 50% uh, of our planning loan, they will also give us a subsidy on. So that's an additional $48,950. So one of the questions that had come up was can are we able to divvy up the loan we're looking at approximately a $69,000 a year loan payment um i i actually had calculated more like 64 but <clears throat> mike was you know suggesting we stick, just be a little bit more conservative so which is fine and that's based on the whole 2.5 mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's based on at minus the 425,000 it's actually based on the 2,026,050 dollars the DWSFR loan okay. up, amount up here so what i asked mike was <clears throat> you know if will it hurt us since we are not going to get a disadvantaged subsidy um and we are we did qualify for the 40 year loan and we did get a little bit of a reduced interest rate to 1.5%. She'd originally thought we'd be 2%. So <clears throat> I asked him if we could divvy up the loan payment so that the water users would not pay the entire thing. Because when you're getting a disadvantaged subsidy, that affects how it works because they look at median household income versus, um, you know, how much your budget's going to go up and all these things. So <clears throat> without us having to worry about that, could we divvy up the payment? He said, yes. So what I asked him for was to pull out, and this is what he gave me. There's $200,000 in roadway work, paving, building, et cetera. 14,000 in hydrants. I wanted that number two. Then there's an additional 64,200. So 30% for engineering, admin, construction management cost, plus the 15% contingency that you can see he's built into the budget. So 480,300. So 23% of the project seemingly <clears throat> could logically go onto the taxpayers as a whole. Now, remember, water users are also taxpayers, but you're divvying that up over a bigger, yeah over a much bigger area. So that, we say that number again, 400 <laughs> something thousand? 400, um, $480,300. So, um, and Dave, I'll have to email you one of these sheets or you can pick it up tomorrow. 
Okay. Sorry, it's it's the bond mailer. So what it comes down to is using these numbers, which obviously I hope we're going to decrease um, once we go out to bond and that we get, you know, additional and maybe love lead abatement, maybe. Um, it's anticipated that a water user will see an approximately $26.14 per quarter, $8.71 per month. Now, that is only <clears throat> based on the loan payment, does not include any other changes that may come to the water budget. I can say to you that the draft water budget that Richard and I put a lot of work in is actually less than the budget we had last year because some of the expenses and things are going to be picked up in the project, uh, you know, repairing, um, uh, shoot, one of the wells, Geico, or oh, which one is it? Boulevard water tank. So anyway, so <clears throat> then the taxpayers will pay for the road work, hydrants, and those associated engineering or contingency costs. So for a home valued at $250,000, that's probably the average house value in Bethel, that would be an approximate cost of $18.50 per year. In addition to what it already is. <clears throat> yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. So basically I'm just talking about just the, this is only talking about the bond itself. Um, so that $18.50 um, could be higher because of the budget that you pass. And so could, you know, this is only talking about the $8.71 per month for water users or $26.14 per quarter. Again, it's just simply to cover the bond payment. But when you look at it, to me, you have a 2.8 million and then a 2.5 million. So you've got $5 million worth of work done for basically what, $9, 10 bucks a month. I mean, you know, if you look at it in the whole, you know, picture. So that is, but so anyway, so this, like I said, I would like to put this in town report that way we'll do the mailer and put this in town report so that people are you know can be pretty educated about the bond vote that we're going to be doing so i also want to say um that i found that this <clears throat> four hundred eighty thousand three hundred. this this 2.5 million water project does not include a full lane pave DWSRF will not fund that. I think they give us like seven feet. Now, somebody, something like Graham Street, we may end up getting a full lane pave just because it's so narrow. And I think it was seven feet that they gave us. I and I it's larger than that because you're not going to get any appropriate equipment in seven foot. All right. So maybe you said 17. I was on the phone with Mike. At Maynard. least like 10 feet. Yeah. So maybe it's more. But, um, and I put a little question mark by my note because. He said on the phone, I was writing down all my notes. And then later I'm like, I wanted to ask him, but so <clears throat> anyways, so that may be something we address at the time too is Sand Hill. I mean, no, it doesn't include Sand Hill. Oh, mm -mm. a Sand Hill. I have a separate earmark for oh. that. Okay. So that's that different, will get, different that's going to get a rebuild. Just be okay. Bicentennial. Right. 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 Yeah, and I'm Bicentennial is narrow, so my guess is Bicentennial. Crystal, most of Crystal Drive. Crystal's very dirt. narrow. Crystal's dirt, dirt yeah. anyways. So they did Cushing, that. they did the full lane. Mm -hmm. yeah. They tore like, up the whole thing to get Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So I do think that the one that may, you know, Highland, Maybe it is, but we, maybe at the time we just say, hey, you know what, how much extra is it going to cost us for a full lane? So, but just to be clear, that is something that we had asked for um, because after the trench paving and the whole thing on Main Street, we didn't want to repeat of that. And then Mike clarified for me today, he said DWSRF will not pay for that unless, you know, the water line was like, you know, in a, yeah. maybe taking up one full lane, but. So I think you're right. I think Graham and Bicentennial won't be a problem, but. 
And so, then Sand Hill is already covered with that other money. And that's a full rebuild, okay. pave the whole ventilata. Okay. So numbers wise, mm -hmm. I'm trying to, the numbers aren't adding up in my head. So, so out of the roughly 2,026,000 mm -hmm. that we would be on the hook of that we're budgeting for, mm -hmm. the breakdown would be four, roughly 480,000 of that would be what we would be putting on to the tax payer. Yep. And then the and 1540 uh -huh. would be the balance that would go on to the water users. So the phase one project that we did, I believe the ending result was around 700 and something thousand that we owe on that. We ended up, which represented three to four dollars a month. So this we one's like up, double that one. We ended up less because we ended up. Well, the, okay, well, it I don't makes have, your case I, harder then. So no, I'm trying to remember how much <laughs> our loan payment ended up being. Yeah. The only thing I can remember is that I budgeted. Well, let's just twenty three thousand and change for that loan payment. And this loan payment is going to be well. I'm just saying. So let's sixty nine. So let's just say it's seven hundred thousand. It sounds mm -hmm. like it was a little bit lower than that. So this project is roughly double mm -hmm. that one. So yeah. we're paying three to four dollars mm -hmm. a quarter. Yep. Right now for the one that we just took care of. Yeah. So doubling this. Yeah. One would think that it would be in the six to eight dollars a quarter, and we're at twenty six. So how does the math? Well, oh, because that much. well, we got last time we had. I understand there's some interest this time around. Whether there is no interest, time. yeah, exactly. So there's no interest. This is a. Well, I guess what I'm wondering is, in these calculations, that does this twenty six dollars a quarter encompass the whole job, and it didn't take out the four eighty? You know, no, I mean, he so argued the numbers aren't adding up. No, that. I took out the whole four eighty. I did the math earlier, and. Um, and I also ran two separate amortization schedules. So what happens is I, I don't know with the original, the original one of this, I think we were at like 12 bucks and we ended up getting more obviously let abatement and forgiveness than we thought we were going to get. But I mean, I ran two amortization schedules mm -hmm. myself and it's, and it's right. Um, I can't tell you how what I ended up doing when Mike must, I know Mike is dividing this by 508 EUs because that's what we have. Because an EU is your one EU, but the school may be 30 EUs. So I went through the math and it's right. I, I don't know. Um, Cause if you calculate it, I can whip out an amortization schedule here online, but if you do a 69, you know, to come up with that, I a little bit higher, but for 69,000, it works out, right? That's the math. That's so, and then he must've divided, he must've divided it. Three. I know he did. He divided it by 508 EUs because I took the loan payment. When I took the $23,000 loan payment, I divided that by five. 474 EUs because I was trying to figure out how much was water, how much were vacancy, how much was. So when I came up with the approximately a dollar per month, I took the final forgiven final amount of the loan and divvied it up. Yeah, by EUs. So because I, I, I don't know, I'm just the numbers are adding up because it's just if roughly it's double. And we were at, let's say four at the highest. So that should be eight. And then the, just a one and a half percent on this loan over 40 years would represent around $560,000 of mm -hmm. interest that we're going to pay on this loan. Mm -hmm. um, so that say is another $3. Yeah. So eight, I mean, that's like 11. I mean, yeah. I come up with 11 a quarter. I, I can't get to 20. Right. Well, so. what are you doing? What, what are you trying to get to? The $26,000 loan payment? No, I'm trying to get to, <clears throat> you had said that base rate increased by approximately 2614 per quarter. Yeah, so he took, um, let me just- So 26, per, so what I'm saying right now is the, if we pay just on the 1540, this is just water user, not taxpayer. 
one five four zero. That's no, rough. Wait, 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 wait. The, 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 she said the monthly payment would be twenty six. Would be no, That's I said eight dollars and seventy one cents. Which is eight eight dollars and something a month. A month, but is that in addition to what they're paying now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're yeah, comparing apples one, to apples. Because phase one, and let's say it's on the high side, phase one we're at like. Water uses go up four dollars a quarter. Mm, I thought we were like twelve a quarter. So this is the amortization. Scale. Yeah, $4 well, I, a I'm month. gonna have to email you all about four a month. It's four a month. Three so it's 12, 12 a quarter. Is it okay? So maybe that adds I, up. You're eight point seven. Are we talking? Are you guys talking about current rates? No, the last the. The, so when we get the through two, the, the two point eight, when the um, I don't phase know. one water line goes through, he was thinking did. twelve dollars a quarter. I is that is that four dollars a month or a quarter that we were going up? No, I thought you said it was twelve dollars a year, oh, right? Yes, okay. Didn't you say twelve dollars a year? No, I said about a buck a month per. Oh. Are you talking? You're talking about the original loan payment. Yeah. I calculated the loan payment. I took. I said it would be about a buck a month, because I divided the amount of the loan payment, which is in the budget, water budget, which is by the users. twenty three thousand. I divided that payment by <clears throat> five hundred and or four hundred seventy five, whatever my EU was. I thought at the time. I think I used four hundred seventy four. Came up with a number. So, and then divided that by 12. So I said, take the budget. Yeah, take the amount of the user divide by, I think 474 was the number I used. So that came up with the per um, EU cost. And then I divided that per EU cost by 12 for 12 but months. But that payment is now going up from 26 to 70. We're talking about two separate things. Yeah, right, twenty four thousand right. dollar payment or twenty three thousand and some change. Let's say twenty four. That's for the two point eight million. Right. So what they were asking me was how I calculated the per month cost. Not right. So but I just. The, how, but I think mm -hmm. Chris is asking how this two point five million or two million mm -hmm. compares to the two point eight million we had before, and we see a difference in the the payment right that's almost three times right and i'm yeah because so we i can't tell you in this second because somebody should ask this question while i was still in the office i'm, sorry, I didn't I'm, have I'm just that schedule I'm, memorized I was, I I into that, i'm simply it's yes. not it's not apples to because apples the reason it's not apples to apples is because you can't compare 2.8 million to 2.5 million because you didn't pay 2.8 million for that project. You ended up paying whatever the number is. We said over 40 paid. years, right? Um, 40 years, yeah. So this is roughly 53,000 a year payment for this one? He said 69. I think it's, I came up with my numbers of a little bit lower, but I can email you all the math tomorrow because we can talk about this for okay, so even, and I'm not going to come up with anything better than I got right now. But 69,000 so, divided by 475? Well, it's 508. No, take six. Yeah, 60, well, you have to take sixty-four thousand, don't you? Got to. Oh, take, I was just using the higher one. But. No, I know, but I'm saying, but you have to remove, um, because this portion. All right, so um, yeah, if you take yeah, you know, you could take sixty-nine thousand, but that's the total bond payment. Okay, take sixty-nine thousand. Well, that's why I'm wondering: two, did some of these numbers two, get? Mike calculated them. I just wrote them. Down. I'm wondering if some of these might take, be the total, but not. You know, what I mean, uh, I can double check. But take sixty-nine thousand. Yeah. Times twenty-three percent and subtract yeah. it. So that's <laughs> roughly sixteen thousand. That would be on the. Users. Yeah. So now take the sixty nine thousand minus the fifteen thousand eight seventy or whatever you just had. Now divide that by five hundred and eight users or five hundred eight EUs. So yeah, there's a hundred and four. That's a year. A year divided by four. Ding 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 ding. Right there. 
26, well, 14 I'm just saying, per But quarter. the math for the old one doesn't add well, up. Well, it's because to this one. it doesn't add because we don't know what the start number is. <laughs> and I don't, I can't tell you because I don't have, okay. yeah, all my stuff is on my computer at work. I don't have yeah, like, a know. summary, just don't trying have to... debt schedule, and I don't have, oh, wait, hang you right on. You know what we can do? We can look at the town I website. Normally I wouldn't care, but you know, there's going to be a well, lot here, of conversation you, you in know regards what? to well, the look, numbers. I'll tell you, we can go on the town of Bethel website, pull up our financial audit, look oh, at our one yeah. for 2022, and look at our, by God, there's a way. And we're going to look at the debt schedule. Let me find it. Um, I don't need any of that. Let's see. So we should have a debt schedule on page what <clears throat> so the the water line phase one that we just did is roughly what eighteen thousand dollars a year 20 roughly 24 24 over 40 years yeah mm, cool. all right let me just find the hang on i gotta find that so we are roughly nine hundred and sixty thousand. we have to pay for that no Stop asking. I can't well, tell you. It doesn't change how many different ways you ask. I can't remember, but we're going to find out in just a second. Let's see. All right. Here we go. Let's find this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't yeah, remember. Thanks to the joys of compound interest. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. Let's see. I, and for the life of me, I just can't remember. So let me see. We We're are gonna... paying back a lot more than we mm -hmm. borrow. Okay. Okay. So none of these numbers are adding up, Teresa. All right, we'll just move forward. No, now you're going to wait a second. No, none of them are adding up. Find the now, none of them are adding up. The, the hole is getting deeper. Well, here, we've so. got one. We did the math <laughs> and you came out. Right, now we're back to the phase one. What does does it add up? Well, here, I'm going to tell you this. Hang on. we got to find our statement of abilities here. Right, this makes for scintillating TV, I bet. Um, well, remember, it's the, it's the meeting of it's a meeting of the select board, that's and right. and there and everybody is welcome to watch. That's right. Yeah, right. Trying, I'm just trying to find it in the audit. <laughs> All right, Jim. Here we go. Town hall, Moscow, not that one. There, right there, isn't it? Yep. So we're oh, that's sewer treatment bond payable. Is it that one? Um, it's not this one. It's right here. Bond payable. Yeah, water system improvements authorized to two five, but eligible for. Principal payments of twenty three four ninety seven, zero percent. Um, so we recognized so nine thirty nine nine hundred thirty nine thousand eight seventy one. Okay. Because we were authorized for two point five, eligible for one point five six six. So and that was over forty years, right? That is zero percent interest for forty years. So around twenty four thousand dollars a year. That sound right? Yes, twenty. Yep, twenty three thousand four ninety seven. Mm -hmm. So twenty five divided by how many water users? Five hundred and eight. So that's a year forty seven dollars a year. Yep. So, okay. So like four, four dollars. A month. A month. Oh, all right. So I okay. So you're right. So twelve dollars a quarter. Twelve dollars a quarter. Yeah. So we took. Right. So if you take twelve, this one's roughly double. So I guess. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So it wasn't a buck a month. If you divided that by. Okay. <laughs> no, it wasn't a buck. A month. I don't know why. That's where it threw me off because also I'm like, wait a minute, this buck a month. I I'm not going to find any of this here. Four nine seven divided it by five hundred and eight. Users came up with so you play a little smoke and mirrors over no, there. No, okay. I divided it by. I actually left it on my spreadsheet, so I'll look. But anyway, so that's the answer. So. Well, that makes more sense now because okay. this well, this number see? now makes sense based on that one. Well, but there. I was going off that buck a month thing, and I was no, that's what I was thinking about. There. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna look at my spreadsheet now, so because okay. I can't figure out, I'll have to look and see what I did because I took it and divided it by 508 users, so that would have been yeah. annual per month. A year divided by 12. But as we're seeing, I mean, just the difference between phase one and phase two, I mean, just the interest alone, which, you know, mm -hmm. one and a half percent interest, you wouldn't think is a lot of money, but 
on this loan, it's another nine hundred thousand dollars we're going to pay on this loan over yeah. the course of. Sure. Yeah. Plus, so. yeah, and you look at too. I mean, we got so much. You know, the we had the additional subsidy that we got last time, as well as the um, disadvantage subsidy. So you know, it was interesting. One thing Mike said today is, you know, everybody's watching the news, reading these articles that all this money is flooded into Vermont. For projects and he's like but he said i can tell you i have multiple projects going and he said i only have two that are getting any sort of subsidy one is swanton and he's like because you know they're broke and they just don't have anything going on up there right now unfortunately and then there was one other town and it was just the mm. same situation where there's not a lot of business not meeting a household income hasn't increased and they were just in straight so he said a lot of people are thinking that there's a lot more that there's money out there he's like but it's not trickling down this way well it is or it's not trickling it's not for this kind of work right i mean Remember, they still owe us from bennington yeah so. <laughs> that's out there still going but yeah. so anyways so that's the the deal so okay so still so then five million dollars worth of work for not a lot of money and not to mention the fact that when you look at the rates that paul wanted they're in the packet you hadn't raised rates in years. And then, yes, we had a big jump of like 10% or 15% one year just to, you know, you've been paying, having people pay $25 a month in vacancy rate, which wasn't even coming close to the base operating cost. Mm -hmm. So it's unfortunate that the system wasn't properly paying for itself originally. The good thing I can say is that there is not no longer a uh, do to do from because for a while the water system owed the general fund money. So the general fund was subsidizing water sewer. Mm -hmm. And really that, I mean, at the time of the budget draft that Richard and I did, I think um, it was just, it was very low as something that had finally mm -hmm. taken care of itself. So, which is good. So it didn't put the burden on the taxpayers. All right. So you want a motion to adopt this? So what you have agree. is, yeah, so you have the declaration of official intent. So obviously that talks about the fact that you intend to do this project, that you're going to have 2.5 million to have indebtedness. Um, well, excuse me, Therese. Hmm. It says portions of Sand Hill also. Yep, but that's portions. a separate, it's not part of this 2.5. Just the water. Just the water. Yeah, the water is. Yep. Okay. Water okay. is. None of the roadway. Okay. Right. All right. So, yep. The road, the water is so. Right, um, that will go in. So that's what the declaration of intent is. The necessity resolution, um, you know, lays out what you're doing again. What, you know, that you resolved to borrow the money, um, and that you have the attached form of the article and warning for this file, which you do. I gave you the updated copy of the warning, and also talks about when we're going to hold a public hearing. Um, so all that information is in here as well. And I gave you an updated version of the warning because I want to use the stricter guidelines so that we would have to put it in the newspaper for three consecutive publications before the bond vote, post it in five places. And, you know, so we'll do that as well. So, yeah, so you'll need a motion to adopt the declaration of intent and necessity resolution. So moved. Okay, any further discussion? Dave, do you have further discussion? Nope. Okay, so you hand up. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then wait, this needs signatures. <clears throat> this page. That's so these are the signatures. Remember, did Paul, you, you signed this before you got off the book. <laughs> did you? That's how we keep you up. I don't know what you're talking about. Legacy project. <laughs> yeah. So you got Paul's water line. Yeah. Paul's, Paul's water line. Paul's water line. Paul's water line. Your bump. Well, well. Yeah. Here. Well, Chris has got his bump out. <laughs> so I got my water out. <laughs> Well, my bump outs cost a lot less than water, but <laughs> yeah, they it's were true. free. <laughs> Didn't raise anybody's taxes. They just get in the way. They just get in the way mm -hmm. of travel. Assuming you travel uh, in the break. Yeah. <laughs> was was this year the last year of um, 
There you go. Speaking of those bump downs, yes, more, it was this, last this was the last year of the grant it that was. we had to install. Yep. And you know what? We, because we moved them and we, Morgan and I met with, um, you know, Penny at Spalding Press and she liked them there. And then we moved them over here. We actually did not receive a single complaint this year because we moved them to different areas and, um, especially at the crosswalk. I think that was nice to do them near pennies. I think that was a good call. So actually we, we, didn't, we didn't receive any complaints because <clears throat> we had some colorful complaints oh, yes, before. Oh, I remember. <laughs> That's so much Put them in the loading zone. Yeah, I remember that. I noticed they ran over all the pots and there's <laughs> quite a bit more congestion <clears throat> that little curve there with uh, with the businesses yeah. leaving their vans and whatnot out there. And it's, and it's, it's actually get worse being on the retail space does go in there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Leaving us, leaving us. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah I have noticed that. Is, <laughs> I've got a month, I, guess. I usually That's don't typically true. get stuck there and I've had to wait <laughs> I've for like one or at, the other. Uh, 18 wheelers and yeah. log trucks. And yeah, it's very congested. <laughs> Maybe we need one of those class one lane. Yeah. <laughs> so where's it going to go? Okay. Down, <laughs> through the, down through the bar and come back up. There, there you go. All right. Uh, town manager's report. So actually, I didn't put one in, I realized after, but so I have a couple things for you. Um, better connections makes us eligible for a $6,500 quick build grant with no match. The application is due February 10th and then the project has to be completed by September 30th. Um, it needs to have a strong public health connection and it actually ended up working out that <clears throat> we didn't have any capacity to do another project, but Chris Fors and Farron Griffin are, have worked with the school and Chris has got permission, I believe from the school and he's, got, or he's getting permission from school and he's got permission from the church and they're actually going to do, um, do a connector so that it's going to go from the athletic fields to the church. So it will be on school and church property it will not be on town property. Um, we're basically just going to funnel the grant to some, to them. Um, Chris and I met our, you know, we discussed and he put in the, in the agreement or was putting in the landowner agreement um, that the, it will be closed in the winter. It won't be yeah. maintained and it will be closed, like barricaded sign at both ends. Yeah. You can put a gate, <laughs> blocking gate. Goat path there right now, the goat right. from the back of the church yeah. down to the ball field. Exactly. So the school is, you know, happy because I, we received an email that he'd sent, then he'd cc me on that he sent to Jamie Canarney, and he said, you know, the, that the church was on board. So it won't be anything to do with the town. Uh, this won't be a town, but it won't be up to us to maintain it, anything like that. Be school. Yeah, I think he'll be coming, funneling the money in to February school. to come to the school board meeting to yeah. talk about that. Yeah, because the application is due the 10th. I know that Chris mm -hmm. and um, like Rebecca are going to do that, and then it has to be done by September. But to do there was a couple suggestions of other projects but mm -hmm. we just didn't have the wherewithal to take on another project so um so anyways i was very happy that chris and um you know farron had gone down there and that they were you know spearheading that um thursday so this week thursday i'm going to meet with connor from two rivers um we're going to start the ball rolling on our it's called our brick grant which is the scoping study for gilead road there's a large box culvert there that's going to be replaced and we got money and two rivers, luckily, um, <clears throat> we could use them as a project manager. So they're going to oversee it and do the bid work and stuff. Thank goodness. They're also doing that with the, that uh, bike ped grant we got for, um, it's going to go in front of uh, John and Giffords to the school. So two rivers is also Rita is going to take over the management of that project so that would be great so um we'll do that and then the town report goes to spalding press and then um oh <laughs> so i made a mistake um last year apparently when completing hra paperwork incorrectly so our hra is our health reimbursement account so you fill out all this paperwork and part of it is you check the box and it says that the hra is paid that the town pays 
their portion of the employees, you know, half their deductible front, and then the employee pays the second share. I filled out the paperwork incorrectly and I fully funded it instead of doing half the deductible. So obviously, that's so my fault, obviously. And um, I should have written it. I figured it out this year when I was refill doing the paperwork and then I realized it. So what I can tell you to the best of my ability is this. There were, it appears that two employees received additional benefits that if I had written in half the HRA, they may not have received. But what I can tell you is I can't, I can tell you what I think, but I can't tell you exactly. And I'll tell you why. I am on that. I am not one of these people. But when you look at, there's only three of us who went, who um, had a higher amount on the card because you get a debit card to make it even more fun and harder to explain. I know that my share, the deductible was $3,200. So as you would expect, I keep track and I write it all down who gets paid. So I know I swipe my card for 3,200. I paid out of pocket 3,200. Once you reach your total deductible, you continue to use your card because you are then it pays 100%. So when I see the breakdown at the end of the year, which is what I printed out, I can see um, there were three people on there who made, who spent, you know, who, who's used the used whatever, $6,400. I'm one of them, but I know that I paid my 3,200 out of pocket. So I know that the additional amount on here is um, because I hit my hundred percent, you know, I had two kids having surgery and you rang it up fast. So what I can tell you is the other two people, it looks, it appears to me that they received additional benefit that they would not have been entitled to if I had funded it properly. However, I don't know what they paid out of pocket. If they were like me and they paid an amount out of pocket, I can't see that. And I did email the lady who runs the HRA. That's my contact. And I said, Hey, do you know what they paid out of pocket? And she's like, I don't know. She's like, we don't know that. So, so if that's so, assuming that they did not pay anything out of pocket, one employee got an additional 1500 bucks and the other one, an additional $2,800. It actually affected uh, three different budgets, um, water sewer and um, uh, transfer station. So, it was my mistake. I didn't realize it. I saw it this year when I was filling out the paperwork for this year. So I made the correction. So I just wanted to be honest and tell you, I realized I made a mistake and, um, and I have fixed it moving forward. So that's the, that's the situation. And I know it's complicated, um, just because insurance is that way. So, and like I said, so this is my estimation that maybe these two people, if they didn't pay out of pocket, then this is what they received. If they did pay out of pocket, yeah, I don't know. So this is what I would consider the worst case scenario. So anyways, it's fun to type. That's the situation. I think that's it for my, oh, I guess I can take my class one lane off. Um, also, too, just to let you know, in case you see them, um, one of our employees um, fractured his leg playing basketball yesterday. So you will see Dylan McCullough plowing in town um, for a little bit, a week, maybe two at the most, depending how long how long an employee's out. So if you see Dylan, that's it, the international truck is not back. So um, Dave may have noticed Christian Hill got taken care of with the grader. Um, and guys, I, did I tell you that, that they think that they may be crack the block? Did I tell you? Okay. At the last, we sent it up. We all know we agreed to about $32,000 because there was a blown gasket. Uh, we get the call, we go get the truck, we drive it back from Burlington, Colchester area, use it a short not very far back to the, go back to the garage. AJ realizes or says, calls me up and says, ah, guess what? 
there is fluid in the oil. So they called, they came back, they flat bedded the truck back. And at that time, AJ and Morgan had thought that maybe when they were sleeving the pistons, that maybe they cracked the block. So the truck, we did not pay that bill, obviously. And uh, we are waiting at this point. Um, I only spoke to Morgan briefly today about the storm. And uh, so, but at last I heard from him, we don't, we don't know what the, they were diagnosing it. So, so we're down a person and, but we've taken care of that with Dylan and, but we're still down a vehicle. So <clears throat> who knows, we could get a whole new, you know, get it back just in time for, spring. for all this. Yeah. <laughs> and our other truck, you know, is still looking to maybe yeah. middle of February, March before that comes. And Morgan had said that he was talking to someone and they're basically saying new trucks now are, <clears throat> are years out now, two plus years out. So, um, so that's the update on the road, um, road situation. So you're advertising again. We are advertising again. Yep. I put the ad back out. We had been out on the website, but put it back in the paper and, you know, cause we're still looking for a full-time person because once the seasonals are gone, we're back to just Morgan and AJ. So we figured we'd, you know, put it out. It's been some, you know, just, you never know people change in jobs, whatever. It's a good time because <laughs> construction seasonal people usually don't go back until like the end of March. So yeah, it's a good time to, they, you know, they made yeah. a career choice. Yes. Yeah, so we put it back out on Facebook from porch forum and being published in the newspaper. So, so if you hear of anybody who would like to work for the town of Bethel, Give us a call. Fill out an application. I think all the area towns have the same one out. Oh, I'm sure they do. All the area, all the area towns. What was that? There you go. With all my spare time. CDLB, yeah. you're good to go. So, does that have to do with moving lumber around? I'm good at that. Yeah, I'm afraid not. But so we're still, yeah. So we're looking and just <laughs> put the ad back out. Okay. So I also gave you in the packet um, the year in review which goes in the town of Fort Paul had edited it. And I do realize today, um, you know, well, I guess, come on, so no, I, I, so if anyone has any changes they want to see, let me know. I moved Paul's around, uh, asked me to move a couple things, which I did. And then I didn't add anything about the bond because we're going to have the mailer in and, you know, this is still the two the year in review. So if anyone has any issues with that, let me know in the morning <clears throat> because like I said, we're going to the printers tomorrow. All right. We have meeting minutes from the ninth. Any amendments to that? Or are we good to approve as written? It was a short I meeting. I didn't have any instructions. You missed it, Lindley. It was like the shortest meeting of the year. <laughs> yeah, there was no budget questions, no warning on Zoom. Zoom. Yeah, yeah. I know my presence was missed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was that laugh you were feeling. That's right. Gene, did you just move that? I or just said just no? Said oh. No changes. Oh, okay, but sorry. I'll move it. Yeah. Okay. Amen. As printed. Moved by Gene. Second. Second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> yes. mm -hmm. On the year in review. Yep. Could you spell out whatever NAMRIC stands for? NAMRIC? N-E-M-R-C. -E oh, I'm yeah, sure. Spell out. I'll make it out. Um, where is that? Good question. I just know it by memory. Yeah. First, New England second, Municipal <laughs> Resource. Yeah. yeah. Spell out. Just three more lines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm trying to get it on. Yeah, right, 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 right. I'll make it out. Okay. No, yeah. yeah. Fix your review. Okay. Twice. Yep. <laughs> we had um, EIC and and Conservation Commission meeting minutes in the packet. I didn't see who was attending the EIC meeting. 
Owen. They have present, you know, present. Owen, your minutes for the EIC didn't say who attended. Do you know who was there? Um, for which meeting was it? Uh, December 24th are the minutes that are in the packet. Paul's uh, asking a question. There should not be any December 24th minutes because we didn't have a meeting that day. All right, let me see. This is so your maybe it's just the agenda. agenda. Maybe the this agenda. is just the agenda. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't put it in here. I mean, it seems sparse on the actual notes. So that would yeah. make oh, sense. Oh, okay. So yeah, you didn't meet that day. Okay. Oh, we oh, didn't right. an agenda. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it, funny. Oh, we didn't wind funny. up meeting. Um, everybody was either sick or it was the holidays oh. and they just didn't, nobody came. <laughs> okay. Oh, I guess must be Kelly just put the agenda in here and didn't put the minutes in. Okay. Sorry about that. That's no, okay. We do have a meeting tomorrow. It's going to be a potluck style meeting at the town hall if anybody wants to join us. And it'll be on Zoom as usual as well. Oh, nice. Potluck. That's nice. What time? Uh, six to eight. Six to eight. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. All right. Any other business to come before the board? We, we took care of Teresa's piece so we don't need to do any executive session anything else I didn't see anything so i'll just need a motion to adjourn okay have a good night everybody 807 thank you